Welcome to New Beginning Outreach International. We invite you to our services at 12 noon or live at 1205 at slugaroo.com. We also have Breaking Bread Bible Study every other Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Let's get ready to enjoy the service. Remember to spread love under God's grace everywhere respectfully to rejoice on and on. See you soon. <laughs> My color purple, you sure is ugly. <laughs> the ugly stuff in your life can make you feel good after it comes to pass. And you find out it wasn't ugly as it really seemed. Amen? Amen. It just positions you to where you need to go. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We want to just thank God for all y'all coming real quick. And you could have melted, but you heard it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thank God we're not like real chocolate and melting the rain. <laughs> But we are here today, and I thank God for you joining us on today. This is the second uh, part of our 13-part series, amen, the mega series, I'm calling it, amen, the trilogies. And we praise God that the Lord gave us another opportunity to revisit uh, all of these 13 sermons, amen. Yeah. And it's going to lead us all the way into our next season, amen. I believe that whatever you take it from one season can help you in your next season. Amen. So we're going to revisit these and we're going to touch on some great things. Amen. Amen. So we want to uh, get it right uh, started real quick. So last week we began, we was in motion and we embraced the shift. Amen. Of the shipwrecked. Amen. And we talked about abandoned ship. So this is going to be part two and we prayerfully that we can wrap this up so we can proceed with the series. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to summarize this real quick. I'm going to re-talk uh, re about the, the, the three that we talked about earlier last Sunday. And we're going to complete the ten reasons that ships sink. Mm. Right. Ten reasons that ships sink. I use our life and stuff that we're going through in our, our life or as situations as different ships. Amen. So I found out ten primary reasons or combinations of factors to the demise of a vessel. We talked about last week that we are vessels of God. Amen. So these uh, are poor design, instability, navigational errors, weather. Warfare, effects of age, improper operations, fire, explosion, equipment failure, and intentional. <laughs> it's funny we played the word intentional today, right? So if you know anything about these, we did these two years ago, and uh, I've never preached it again, so we're going to just hit it hard, and it's going to be some good stuff that's going to bless us at this time right now. Amen? His word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen? So his word stands true, even though other stuff falls, so this is going to be a blessing to you. So before I go forward, I want to give you a disclaimer. This is going to challenge you. This is going to catapult you to the next level, and this is going to make you... <laughs> I was just talking to Mel in the back. If you bad, cross this line. <laughs> this is going to make you feel, if you bad, cross this line. <laughs> Amen. Because sometimes life going to be that line. And if you bad, cross that line. Amen. So today, don't get mad at me. Amen. <laughs> just receive or say, ouch, man. Amen. So we're going to flow right into it. So as we flow from the natural aspects now as your coast guard who's your pastor, let's tie this stuff into spiritual things. Amen? Amen. Poor design. We talked about this last week. Poor design is your foundation. Uh -huh. Your foundation has to be Jesus Christ. So if your ship or your life has poor design or poor foundation or no foundation, it's time to abandon that ship. Mm -hmm. Amen? We, we coined the phrase, if not, you're bound to drizzle. Yeah. Amen? Instability. Unstable or double-minded. James 1 and 8 is the verse that we came from. It says, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So that means we have to set our sights on the prize and go forth. And don't just second-guess yourself all the time. Sometimes we get to the point where, well, man, I know I'm doing this church thing, but I don't know if this faith thing going to work. Amen. It's a thing we can do in church, but then when it comes to faith, we don't know if it works. Amen. So we got to be, uh, you know, on, on, that, on that road, on, on that way to, to receive that prize. We got to go forth. We got to press. Amen. So navigational errors. No vision. No goals. Amen. Not taking good direction or correction. That's good. Proverbs 29 and 18. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But happy is he who keeps the law. And then in the NIV, it says this. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instructions. Amen. So blessed is he that also, amen, takes heed or wisdom's instructions. Sometimes wisdom will go against what you're thinking. Amen. amen. Sometimes you go to a place to receive wisdom, even though you're thinking that I should do it this way. Amen. Four. Now, 
Number four, we into part two. <laughs> this is funny. Weather. It's raining cats and dogs outside. It's funny. Number four, weather. So your season in your life or situation, whether good or bad, you know what season you're in and when that season is up. Weather. Number four is weather. Your season in your life. Situation. So here's a, a scripture we're going to jump to. Mark 4, 35 through thir uh, 41. Excuse me. Mark 4, 35 through 41. Weather. Season in your life or situation. And the same day when the evening was come, he said unto him, let us pass over to the other side. Yes. Cross that line if you're bad. Glory to God. I told you that to preach. And it says, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. 37. And there, it says, and there were also with him other little ships. Uh -huh. And there arose a great storm of wind. And when the waves beat into the ship, so that it now was full, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. We're talking about Jesus, asleep on a pillow. Mm -hmm. And they awake him and said unto him, Master, carest thou or not that we perish? Mm -hmm. Question mark. Have you ever thought, Jesus, you don't care that I'm going through this situation? Mm -hmm. Jesus, you don't care that I'm, 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 I'm topsy-turvy in my life? You don't care? Wake up, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind right. and said unto the sea, Peace. Peace. Be still. Peace. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? Question mark. So when we go through something in our life, why are we so fearful? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. It says, How is it that ye have no faith? Like I said, we can do church, but we can't do faith. Mm -hmm. How can you do that? Amen. Then it says this, 41. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? <laughs> that even the wind and the sea obey him. Amen. Here the Lord demonstrates faith in the midst of a storm. Amen. Amen. Your weather, your, your season in your life. Amen. You have to demonstrate faith in the midst of the storm. He says, you, your faith, where do you think that? Glory to God. Now in the message it says this. With many stories like these, he presented his message to them. Fitting the stories to their experience and maturity. Sometimes you really can't receive the word because you got to get to a mature level. This is good for you. Like I say, some of this ouch man today. Amen. And your experience, amen. If you don't go through the ugly, you can't come out smiling. If you ain't never been there before. You're just going to come in frowning and leave out frowning. But your faith in the midst of an ugly situation is going to let you smile at the end. Glory to God. And it says this. And it says, um, when he was alone with his disciples, he went over everything, sorting out and tangling things. It says, untying knives. That's why it's so good for you to come to extra stuff other than church. So we can sort some of these things out. Amen. It says, late that day he said unto them, let's go across to the other side. Yes. They took him in a boat and he, as he was. Other boats came along and a huge storm came up. Waves poured into the boat, threatening to sink it. Glory to God. You know when you're in a storm, stuff threatens to sink your boat. Yes. Stuff tries to creep in. You know, glory to God. That's another sermon. And it says, and when Jesus was in the stern, his head on a pillow sleeping, yes. they aroused saying, teacher, it is nothing to you that we're going down. We about to drizzle. Awake now. That's a rhyme, ain't it? We going down. About to drizzle. Awake now. Oh. It says, he told the wind to pipe down. <laughs> Master, we going down. We about to drizzle. Awake now. Pipe down. <laughs> Amen. He says, quiet, settle down. <laughs> you hear me? And it says, and the wind ran out of breath. It says, the sea became smooth as glass. Jesus reprimanded the disciples. He says, why are you such cowards? Question mark. Do you have any faith at all? So when we go into a storm, it's going. <laughs> It's going down. Pipe down. Do you know that you got power just like Jesus? That he, He's inside of you. So when a storm is going in your life, just say, pipe down. Glory to God. Peace be still. Woo. It says, there 
uh, was absolute awe, and they staggered. He says, who is this anyway, they asked. Win and see at his beck and call. Amen. So as you attempt to proceed to cross over to the other side, it says these are scriptures to keep in mind. No matter what storm you in, Jesus is on board yeah, as yeah. you obey. Yeah. So as you go in and in your life or your situation, Jesus is on board. Amen. So just think about he's on board. I would rather have Jesus on my ship than not on my ship. Glory to God. So then I could just say, Jesus, we going down. We could just say, <laughs> Amen. So as you attempt to pro cross over to the other side, keep Jesus on your ship. Amen. Amen. There's great scriptures to keep in mind. No matter the storm in your life, yeah. Jesus is in board. He's on board, excuse me. And the storm has to obey. Yeah. Has to obey. Yeah. Amen. So this, as you abandon the ship, Amen. When you get out of that ship, you got to get on the right ship. Amen. So let this remind you that God is with me. Wherever you go, he's with me. Amen. Wherever you at, he's there. It says, Jesus is with me, and this thing shall obey. Peace be still. Whatever you're going through, weather, we're talking about weather, we're talking about situations in your life. Jesus is, is in this with me. He, he's here. He's here. Obey. Amen. Now, another one is number five. Warfare. Now, put this down. This can be self-inflicted. Or by opposition. That's right. Now self-inflicted is me, me, me. I'm doing my own thing. Right. <laughs> you sink in your own ship because you left Jesus at the dock. Uh -huh. Jesus, we just talk about Jesus. He, he going to make stuff pipe down. But if you leave Jesus on the dock, he going to go down. That's right. So it's me, me, me. I'm doing me. I'm sinking my own ship because you left Jesus at the dock. Amen. So when you cast sail, you leave him behind because you think you got everything you need. Yes, Jesus. Come on. Amen. You begin to set sail into the sunset. Yes. But when you get far away from God, treading on unfamiliar waters, then you are on enemy territory. Amen. You left Jesus back there. He's like, oh, I'll be back. Now you're just sailing. And then it starts to get a little... Uh -huh. Then it started getting a little crazy. Then you start seeing a pirate ship with the cross and bones, and you're like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Jesus said, if you would have took me on a ship with you, I could have told him to pipe down. Yes, Jesus, come on. So when you cast sail, you leave Jesus behind. Amen. Then you run into opposition. Have you ever noticed sometimes if you, you, you leave Jesus on the dock, stuff really start to get kind of crazy? Yes. <laughs> and you feel like, man, I need to go back to Jesus. <laughs> Uh, we got we got a abandoned ship because now we're about to sink. We got water up in here. And we just we got to go back and get him. Yes. Yeah, but then, woo! Check this out. Now I'm going to just flow real quick. I just seen the image of when Peter said, can I come out to the water? Oh, oh, oh. When you out on the, on, on the boat, hey amen, put this in your mind. You out on the boat and the storm going crazy and then you look out and you see Jesus out there, you got to have enough faith to get out the boat. Oh, amen. Oh, we can do church, but can we do oh, faith? Amen. Now you got to think, Jesus, I see you. Can I get out of this boat? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Six, effects of age. Effects of age. Amen. We know about the Queen Mary. It's a, it's a big ship that's in Long Beach. Amen. It's a dock ship now. Amen. It's a retired ship. It, it, it turned into a museum. Uh -huh. Check this out. So religion and tradition of men can sideline you. Yeah. It says, so on, on. Oh, on. explosion, bad apples, gossip, back by. It says, get off that ship. Abandon the ship. They said, at MBOI, I would not tolerate it. Glory to God, Pastor. He said this two years ago. Wow. It says, I'm also, in that case, a fire extinguisher. Amen. Amen. I think we got a little sign to say fire extinguisher. Amen. Amen. It's pointing down. Lord Jesus. Pipe down. I'm called to put out fires. Yes. Amen. It says, as a kingdom of God, we must love one another and be happy to learn to coexist. That's right. Amen. We got to learn how to coexist. A, a, a church is going to be a body of believers, but it's also going to be a body of non-believers. Yeah. It's going to be even some of your enemies. Because everybody needs little Jesus. Yeah. Everybody needs little Jesus. You know? The blood of Jesus. That's right, Ray. The blood. Uh -huh. The blood of Jesus. Check this out. It says, I heard a pastor say, hey... They mean to me. They hurt me. Then he put this. But you went back to your boyfriend. I ain't going down there no more. But your, your boyfriend, he dogging you. <laughs> My God. He cheating on you. He go back to him. You got a black guy. You in church. Shades on. But you going right back home to him. We 
tell you the truth, I ain't going there no more. Uh -huh. <laughs> I said, wow, I put that down. I said, I heard the pastor say that. And then he went on and said, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hug you that day. Maybe I was going through something. I said, well, this is Dr. Vernon in Ohio. That was, it blessed me, amen. Amen. Number nine. Equipment failure. This reminds us again at the proper maintenance time of prayer, Bible study. Amen. We have to come together and worship. Amen. This is an equipment failure. Sometimes That's we right. market come these on. things not just to have you here in number, uh -huh. but for your maintenance. Yeah. Amen. Because not only do you need oil changes, because when they give you that 26 <laughs> point inspection. Okay, ma'am, you know you uh you was really low on oil. And uh, not only that, if you would have drove one more mile, your engine would have messed up. But do you know that uh, your brakes need to be done? <laughs> and you're like, well, my cousin said he's going to fix them brakes. Oh, <laughs> man, you also not just need brakes, but you need rotors. Okay. Rotors, too. And then we might have to just take your whole axle off because you just been riding. And, you know, your tie rods are messed up, you know. Oh, 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 oh. Don't let your car be a nice, pretty car, but it need maintenance. Oh, yeah. Amen. Don't let your life look so good on the outside, but inside you just tore up from the floor. Amen. So we need to have proper maintenance. If not, we're going to have equipment failure. Amen. The reason why these things and compartments mess up, amen, is because it's a lot of wear and tear. It's a lot of bumpy things out in the, in the, in the road, amen, and you're hitting some stuff. It's a lot of stuff that comes in your life that try to mess up the, the undercarriage of your vehicle. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. It starts to rust. Water, rain, sleet, snow. All of these things. Equipment failure. This is good. Lack of commitment! Exclamation point. Ooh. Ouch, man. Get off that ship. Put this down. But you want someone to be there when you need them. Ooh, God. Man, I want them to be there when I need them. Where you at, buddy? <laughs> Especially the church, but the church barely sees you. Question mark. My God. It's two years ago, so don't get mad. You should have been here two years ago. <laughs> it says your attendance matters. Yeah. Amen. It encourages those sheep who look up to you. Do you know someone looks up to you? They see your check-ins. So when they don't see your check-in, they're like, where they at? They're looking for you to encourage them. Yeah. Amen. It keeps them going on days when they want to give up. That's powerful. Yeah. Your commitment counts other than just you. That's right. Amen. Because some people only come to church because of you. You know sheep ain't got sheep, so if they don't see that other sheep, the other sheep might just go on back with the other sheep that's lost. Yeah. Commitment. Get off that ship. That's right. Of the lack of commitment. Excuse me. Get off that ship. No, get committed. Amen. Yeah. Amen. This is this. It's good. Prayer helps you, but corporate prayer helps the body as a whole. That's right. Come on. Amen. Prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Two or three gather. We thank God for that. But what if two or three hundred can gather? Yes. Yes. Now we can, you know, shake some. Shake some regions corporately. Yes. This is good. Study is for you to know the word for yourself. Amen. Equipment right. failure. Come so this on. is all equi equi uh, equipment failure. Amen. We have to make sure. On your phone called Givelify. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the fastest and easiest way to donate to the church, charity, or cause of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated sign-up forms to fill out, websites, or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser or church service you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to specify the donation amount. Tap 2. Select the specific campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit card, complete your donation in one tap. You get an immediate donation receipt, and you can even share your generosity on Facebook or Twitter. Givelify lets you easily see your donation history with any church or charity you donate to. You can also accurately track your donations for your taxes without needing to hunt down receipts, bank statements, or acknowledgement letters. You can also set your home and favorites. Mark churches as your favorites so you can donate as frequently and generously as you'd like, even when you're thousands of miles away. Mark the church you normally attend as your home church for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done. Yeah, 
Giveify. If you download that app, Giveify, you'll be able to, to sow seed to us or give us a, a, a seed of appreciation or anything you like to do. Amen. So check us out on Giveify. And our church is New Beginnings Outreach International, Alton, Illinois. You'll see me and my wife's face on there. And you'll see our phone number, address, etc. You can give as much as you want. Amen. So tell a friend and tell a friend. Hey, we're going to give to New Beginnings Outreach International on Giveify. Download.